interception. Lethargy and confusion are signs of jet lag. Here they come, and down he goes. Gave way to the Jets, taking a beating. He took it away down the stretch and into the end zone. We'll hear the locker room's reaction. I'm frustrated. I'm upset. As the Jets are still looking for their first win of the season. This is Jets Late Night. Well, the Jets are now 0-4 to start the season as the offensive woes have yet to be figured out. Welcome to Jets Late Night. Steve Overmeyer here alongside 11-year pro and former Jets defensive end Jamal Westerman. Uh, Jamal, what's it do to a locker room when you're looking around and the answers just cannot be found? Man, it's tough having a game like this. I mean, you're looking at your teammates, what can we do? But you know that you have to get it done in the locker room. And that's the only thing, because there's no help coming. Joe Namath is not coming through that door. <laughs> and the guys that are in that locker room, the only guys you're going to win with, the only guys you're going to compete with, and they have to do something, because today was a very tough game to watch. Yeah, fourth game of the season, and it did not look good. Let's get you to the highlights. Uh, the Jets supposedly spending their bye week working in the film room and revamping the offense. Today was supposed to be a reboot. It's not what we saw. Luke Falk throwing a pick six as Philly races out to a 14-0 lead in the first. And then on defense, the Jets actually held their own. They limited Philly to less than 300 yards on offense, but the Eagles made the most of their chances, converting two of three chances in the red zone. Game was already decided by the time they got to the fourth, and finally they saw something that resembled the offense. Vincent Smith scoring New York's first offensive touchdown in 12 quarters. That is the longest streak by any team in 10 seasons. Nobody can blame the Jets for being too cautious when it comes to Sam Darnold's health here, but how they handled Luke Falk this week was borderline negligent. Falk barely had first-team reps this week, and it showed a fumble loss for a touchdown, and he took a beating from the Eagles' defense, Jamal. I mean, this defense right here, you came in the game with three sacks, able to get 10 sacks, 55 ground was all over the field. He had sacks, he was pressuring the quarterback, he had hands in the quarterback's face, forced on an interception. He was a monster all game. This defense is a championship defense, and they got right today against the New York Jets. Jets losing by 25, their first 0-4 start since the Herm Edwards era in 2003. We had a lot of different reasons for a lot of those sacks. Um, whether we held on to the ball too long, there was one that was that was definitely on me. Didn't have anybody open, and we had a couple where we, we didn't run the right routes, and we kind of busted on that. And you know, Luke didn't have anywhere to go. We were ready to go. We had a good week of practice. We just defense played well. Special teams played well. We just didn't play very well on offense. We just took our turns. They're not fun. You know that hasn't been fun to call. You know, we just got to find a way to be able to run the football, be able to have positive plays, keep ourselves out of third and long. We're just doing all the, those things that you can't do. The defense is playing good. Special teams playing good. We we all know what group needs to play better. And, you know, I mean, that's on me. So I told those guys in there that I'll get it fixed. It's 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 on me. It's on nobody else. So that's that's what we're gonna do. All right, you'd like to hear him taking responsibility here, but let's talk a little bit about Adam Gase. There is still belief in this offense. The results aren't there, but dating back to last year with the Dolphins, Gase has lost seven straight with a combined four touchdowns in those games. It is extremely hard to judge this Jets offense off these first four games. He doesn't have his starting quarterback. This is the guy that we planned for this year. The New York Jets plan to have Sam Darnold for the whole year to start him, to make him play, to win games with him. Without your starting quarterback, you can tell there's no creativity with the offense. You're not using all your weapons, and you're very hamstrung, and there's nothing happening, and there's nothing for the crowd to feed off of. And the defense are playing well, 17 points. Sure. Got out to the quarterback a little bit, but you need that other side to really pull their weight. What you need is a quarterback that is not going to kill you in these games. And Luke Falk had two interceptions and a fumble. Two of his turnovers ended up going back for a touchdown. He didn't take a single practice snap with the ones this week. How much would that have helped him if he did? It's hard to be, play quarterback in the NFL. Coming up to the line of scrimmage, he didn't get that in practice. He didn't see his receivers with the timing coming in and out of their routes. He doesn't hear the starting offensive linemen communicate the different pressures. You know, and Jim Schwartz being an experienced defensive quarterback, 
reported, he sent pressures from everywhere. Cornerbacks were coming, linebackers were coming, defense and linemen were dropping out. And the quarterback didn't get that this week. He got the second team reps, which are probably half the reps, even less because they wanted Sam Darnold to get all the reps because they wanted him to start this week. Yeah, no doubt about it. And the results obviously were what we saw. And there were some changes on the offensive line. It didn't work out. They gave up 10 sacks. The Eagles go from 32nd in the NFL Ooh. in sacks it's a get right to game. sixth in one game. How do the Jets get this offensive line going right now? You have to get five guys all together, all on the same plane. Too much communication. You can tell that they were talking, but they didn't they were not used to talking to each other, not used to communicating together. And this defense, they came to play. And that's one of the things. You caught a defense that's been playing bad on a good day. And they came hungry, and they ate the com completely the whole day. The defensive linemen ate. You had interceptions. You had cornerbacks coming on, making big plays in the passing game. Everybody had an opportunity to make a play this game. Yeah, it was, it was a hunger man dinner, and they were definitely eating in this one. The one who scored for the Jets offense was really from an unlikely source. Vincent Smith was recently signed from the Texans practice squad. Our Otis Livingston caught up with him after the game. All right, Vincent, one of the few bright spots for the Jets today, that touchdown as you ran in today. Take us through that play. Uh, you know, it was a play we worked on a little bit and uh, got introduced to everything this week, and it came out of nowhere and just made a play. That was the first touchdown in about 32 possessions. Why do you think the offense has so much trouble scoring the football, even after the bye week? Um, personally, to me, we just need to play as a team. Uh, I know we have a lot of struggles, injuries, and I think uh, when it all comes together, we're going to be really good. There's a lot of a lot of yards to be had out there. How frustrating is it for an offense not to be able to put any points on the board like that? Oh, it's very frustrating. You know, we're all professionals and we want to be professional. And, you know, our job is to score, put points up, get yards, pick up first downs. And like I said, it's, just, it's on us, the players, to, to do it. So, you know, we just have to put in that extra work, the extra time. It's hard to win a game in the NFL. Jamal Westerman, you play defensive end. What's it like when you see that reverse oh, end around coming over at the top of you? Because it's always a faster guy than you, right? So you're trying to stop, get your foot in the ground. You try to redirect to make the tackle on the receiver coming around, but you can never make it. And this play right here, this was one of the plays that I like from Adam Gates. They're in the red zone defense, they're in the red zone offense, and they got points with the creative offense that went away from Le'Veon Bell and another receiver got the ball. And that's what you like to see, that creativity, which you didn't see today. You start on that. They have the players to be able to do some different things, but they're just not doing it. You know that he had to limit the playbook with Luke Falk out there. We just hope that that playbook can be expanded when you see Sam Darnold get back in the lineup. All right, we're back to get an opinion of beat writer Connor Hughes next. You're watching Jets Late Night. I'm not going to make any excuses. I got to go out there and perform better than I did today. Uh, you know, I was getting mental reps all week, and I got to do the best uh, with what I got, you know. Whatever it is, it's football. So any opportunity I get a chance to make a play, I got to make a play. You know, I, I think I could play better today. You know, um, and if everybody in the locker room feel the same way, you know, they probably should be here. At M&T Bank, we understand having the right guidance in life is important. That's why we're here to support you along your entire financial journey. So if you have questions about managing debt, ways to save, or planning for the future, we're here to help. Could you go? Let's talk today. This is Jonathan Harrison, Center for the New York Jets. Bullying and cyberbullying have reached alarming proportions, and as someone who has been bullied, I personally know how traumatic this can be. That is why the Jets and I have teamed up with Stomp Out Bullying and Beth Page Federal Credit Union to tackle all forms of bullying. Educators can register for our Jets Tackle Bullying program presented by Beth Page at nyjets.com slash anti-bullying. And if you or someone you know is a victim of bullying, go to stompoutbullying.org. the difference between good and great fire grit dedication at florida tech we face obstacles with integrity with courageous character with unbridled determination we stand for knowledge for a better tomorrow and for each other 
Give us an impossible task and let us get to work. In our pursuit of greatness, we are Florida Tech. Relentless. Well, the Jets were flat out dominated today by the Eagles 31 to 6. But let's find out the perspective of a beat reporter. He covers the Jets for The Athletic. Connor Hughes joins us from Philly. And Connor, the Jets made a decision to keep Brandon Shell as a healthy scratch today. Given their O-line concerns, how surprising was this? Uh, it wasn't because Adam Gase kind of said that this was coming when we talked to him before the bye. I mean, this was something that he laid out. He said that he was going to analyze his offensive line's issues. He was going to go to the film room and try to figure out a way to make his offensive line problems better. And the way that he was going to do that was the best five players were going to play on Sunday. And what he came out and determined, what he came and figured out, was that the best option for the Jets at right tackle was not Brandon Shell, but it was going to be Chuma Adaga, the rookie out of USC. And remember, Gase played a pretty big role. I know McCagden was the general manager and McCagden ran the draft, but Gase was one of the guys that scouted Chuma. He was one of the guys that went over Chuma's film. He's one of the guys who talked to him and, and made one of the, was one of the big leading voices in adding him to the Jets. He's a guy that they like a lot. And one of the reasons why they decided to play him instead of Brandon Shell was because they thought he would bring more athleticism and he was going to allow the Jets to do a little bit more maybe than what Brandon Shell would because Shell is kind of more of that physical uh, phone booth type offensive tackle where he's best in close spaces, not really a guy that's too great when he's off running. So they thought they were going to get more with Chuma out there. He's a guy that they drafted. Brandon Shell is not somebody the Gays played a role in drafting, and they threw him out there against the Eagles to see if he wouldn't be a little bit more of an improvement. Obviously, collectively as the offensive line, uh, that plan didn't work out too well. Well, the Jets desperately need Sam Darnold, but he clearly wasn't healthy enough to play this week. Is it even safe to put him out there next week against Dallas? It's safe. Here's the thing about Sam Darnold. It's, it's safe for him to play as long as his spleen is no longer enlarged. That's, that's what this is about. This isn't about conditioning. This isn't about a sprained ankle. This isn't about any of that stuff. With Sam Darnold, it's all about his spleen. That's why he didn't start today. It wasn't because the Jets didn't think he had enough practice reps. It wasn't because he missed the last three games include, or the last two games, including the bye. This was all about him and his spleen. And as long as his spleen subsided in size and went back to the normal size of what a spleen should be, he can play. When that spleen is enlarged, it is more susceptible to rupturing. And when a spleen ruptures, that's when potential death comes into the equation. And that's why Sam Darnold made the joke earlier this week about I'm not trying to die out there. So that's what this is all about. So if, the Je if Sam Darnold comes out there on Monday, which is when he will have additional tests, and those tests reveal that his spleen is no longer enlarged, guess what? Sam Darnold can play against the Dallas Cowboys. You can get all of his thoughts in The Athletic. Connor Hughes, thanks for your insights. Thanks for having me, Steve. All right, so we welcome back Jamal Westerman once again. And Jamal, would, would you have pause putting Sam Darnold out there with the offensive line that just gave up 10 sacks? The only thing that makes me slow down and put a Darnold in is, is the spleen. The spleen is fine. You if have the to doctors say okay. Then you got to put him out there. He's your starting quarterback. He's been one to be QB1 his whole life. Mm. He doesn't want to sit on the bench and watch his team fall, fall behind go 0-4. So he wants to be out there. You put him out there if he's healthy. You work the game plan around his skills. You know, you design the whole, whole offense around him. So I expect when we see Sam Darnold, we'll see a more improved offense. He's not going to fix all the morts. He's not going to block everybody. He's not going to catch all the balls. You know, he can only do his job, but I think people will grow around him. And that's what you expect out of your starting quarterback. An expanded playbook is the first thing that you'd love to see there. I want to move. The Jets fans were sounding off on Twitter today. We're going to have the most memorable tweets when Jets Late Night comes back. Hey, Winchester. I love you, but this isn't just any car. It's an Audi. Every line, every stitch, every sound has been meticulously crafted right down to the very smell. And you're just gonna slobber all over it, man. Obsessively dedicated to every detail. Get exceptional offers on an Audi today. Dear Outdoors. It's true what they say. You're great. Can't wait to take a hike, pitch a tent, and make a splash. Whenever you call, I promise to answer. 
Live large. Toyota. Get 0% APR for a full 60 months on a new 2019 RAV4 or get $2,000 customer cash on a new Highlander. Find yours at buyatoyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. Selfie? Yeah. Uh-oh. What? I think I forgot to lock my Buick. <laughs> Got it. <gasps> At least your Buick's locked. At the heart of every Buick Encore is you. Current eligible non-GM owners and lessees get 20% below MSRP on most 2019 Buick Encore models. Or current eligible lessees get this low mileage lease on this 2019 Encore for around $149 per month. Watch Lonnie Quinn and the CBS2 weather team on CBS2 News. Well, Jets fans are never silent, and Twitter provides a perfect opportunity to kind of release that anger or at least some of that wit. So let's take a peek at the top tweets of the day. We start off with yeah. Jets fans finally got a, their first franchise quarterback in 40-plus years. We can't even enjoy it yet. It's like knowing what's under your Christmas tree and not being able to open it. Santa baby, <laughs> Santa, <it's> like, <laughs> listen man, he'll he'll be back. He'll yeah, be he'll back. Be a great tweet though. All right, next one from Mike. At this rate, Greg Williams is going to put a bounty out on Adam Gase. <laughs> listen, skip. Just don't don't say nothing with that yeah. one. You get a fine. You get fined. Daniel tweets out. I'm just saying the Winnipeg Jets have scored nearly as many goals in their last two games as the amount of points that the New York Jets currently have against the Eagles, and you only get one point per goal in hockey. Well, fan of Winnipeg. I love the peg, as a, as a Blue Bomber, oh, former nice. Canadian Player of the Year. That was my spot, man. Colossio, shout out, man. That was great Italian food in Winnipeg. You wouldn't guess that. <laughs> Is that right? Oh, great Italian food. Okay, all right. And then uh, finally, can we just order five of these from Amazon to replace our offensive line? Some, sometimes these fans can be a little cold. If you prime, you're good, man. Amazon Prime, you can do it tomorrow. <laughs> right, it would be in, you rough be ready for the next week. Rough All right, well, the Jets' defense only allowed 17 points today, and Jamal Adams is the leader of that defense. Otis caught up with Jamal after the game. I don't avoid getting frustrated at all with losing. <laughs> I mean, I don't. We, we lost. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So I'm frustrated. I'm upset. It is what it is. What gives you confidence, Jamal, that this can turn around? I stay confident. We stay confident. That's all we can do. Man. Do you believe that, that this, these problems that, that collectively the team has kind of had with winning, do you think that they will be solidified when Sam comes back, that that, that will make? I hope so. We'll see, man. We just got to continue to do what we do. I got to continue to do my job um, as one of the, the 53 guys on here. Um, and I got to hold everybody accountable. Um, as a, one of the leaders, I got to make sure everybody's, you know, keeping their head up high, playing, playing fast, um, and, you know, hand, controlling what we can control. Did you expect a different outcome, though, after the bye week? I mean, anytime I step on the field, man, I expect to win. Mm -hmm. We all do. Um, but it didn't happen. Okay. The defense is playing well. They're playing good. What message would you have for the defenders after you see what the offense is doing? As a defensive player in something where you're playing a good game, they're playing winning football, the offense is just not. But as a defensive player, you're always thinking, let me do my job. More TV time for me. When I'm on the field, it's time for me to show up and do my job. And the other thing you're always thinking is you don't want to have a letdown and win the game that the offense balls out. Right. The offense goes out there and puts up 30 well, 21. We'll go 21. Okay. The offense goes out there and puts up 21, and you don't want to have a letdown as a defensive player. So you're always focused on your job, to do your job every game, try to create turnover, try to help your offense, so that if they do have a spark, you have an opportunity to get a win, to play a competitive game, which they haven't played in a while. So far, we have not seen that uh, so far this year. Hopefully, we'll get it turned around within the next week or so. All right, we're back with more from the locker room and a breakdown of what went wrong on that pick six. You're watching Jets Late Night.
turn left. You can turn right. Or if you're behind the wheel of the BMW X5, you can decide not to turn at all. Unless you absolutely have to. The BMW X5. Confidence doesn't take detours. Hurry and release a 2019 BMW X5 xDrive 40i for $6.99 a month. Yellowtail tastes like a very long breath after a very long week. Like lifelong bonds and well-deserved promotions. Like the online date who actually looks like their profile picture. Like crushing your best man speech. It tastes like this, like that. Like finding exactly what you're looking for. Like being in the right place at the right time. Yellowtail wine tastes like happy. The rule of three states, things that come in threes are inherently more appealing. We couldn't agree more. Three SUVs, one GMC. Current eligible non-GM lessees get this low mileage lease on this all-wheel drive Acadia SLE1 for around $229 per month. Or get this low mileage lease on this all-wheel drive terrain for around $189 per month. Watch Christine Johnson and Maurice Dubois weeknights on CBS2 News at 5 and 11. Welcome back to Jets Late Night. I'm Otis Livingston along with Jets offensive lineman Kelvin Beecham. And Kelvin, um, before the bye week, there was a lot of talk about guys taking accountability, guys looking in the mirror over that period and coming back better, coming back making those adjustments. Do you think that guys really did that? Uh, I have no question the guys did that. Uh, but at the end of the day, it still takes 11 guys every single play, um, executing all together. As far as an offensive line, you guys are going to be judged on sacks. And uh, uh, Luke took a multiple hits, got sacked a lot of times. Um, your thoughts on how the f guys up front play? Again, it takes 11 guys, 11 guys playing um, excellent football. Um, play in and play out, and it wasn't 11 guys doing that every single play. Was it, in a, was it a situation that they were just, you got to tip your hat to the Eagles today? I think you do tip your hat to the Eagles. Um, they did a, a great job of uh, freshening us on early downs, um, bringing safeties uh, almost every play I've never seen. Mm. A safety on the line of scrimmage almost every single play, uh, 23 and, and 27. Uh, did a great job um, just keeping pressure on us throughout the game. I believe the uh, end around to the wide receiver for the score was the first score in 30 32 possessions. How frustrating is that that you guys aren't able to get the ball in the end zone more consistently? Very frustrating. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, this is what we're judged on. Um, the film is our resume. Um, and again, our resume isn't looking too good right now. How do you guys turn this around? Offense, defense, and special teams? You know, I got to tip my hat to our defense and our special teams. They're playing really good football right now. Um, it's one phase that really has to pick it up and, and carry the load. All right. Best of luck to you next week against Dallas. Stay tuned for more of Jets Late Night coming up after this. What's the difference between good and great? Fire, grit, dedication. At Florida Tech, we face obstacles with integrity, with courageous character, with unbridled determination. We stand for knowledge, for a better tomorrow, and for each other. Give us an impossible task and let us get to work. In our pursuit of greatness, we are Florida Tech, relentless. Seat closer. You need a seatbelt. That's it, Grandma. That's it. Roll here. Your turn. At M&T Bank, we understand having the right guidance in life is important. That's why we're here to support you along your entire financial journey. So if you have questions about managing debt, ways to save, or planning for the future, we're here to help. Look at you go. Let's talk today.
Lessons from Game Day is sponsored by the New York Lottery. Our lot of small wins goes to a defensive unit that is not getting the credit they deserve. New York may have allowed 31 points to the Eagles, but only 17 of them came on the defense's watch. Mind you, they were without two of their starting linebackers, C.J. Mosley and Jordan Jenkins. Today, they held Carson Wentz to less than 200 yards passing, and after five weeks, the Jets are ranked 13th in yards allowed and 7th in rush yards allowed. Well, Luke Falk finished with a couple of picks in this game. One of them returned for a touchdown. So let's break down that play as we welcome back Jamal Westerman. Jamal, what did you see on this play? What exactly went wrong here? Well, it starts with the play before. The play before was third and one. Le'Veon Bell downhill. They make the play in the backfield to stop him. This is a fourth and one play, if you pause it here. Le'Veon Bell is set deep. Now, everybody knows fourth and one, the Jets, we're expecting to run Le'Veon Bell sure. downhill. Now they did something different. They ran a play-action pass. If you uh, play it, they fake it to Le'Veon Bell on the play-action wide zone. But everybody has his eyes on Le'Veon Bell. Brandon Graham, being the defensive player of this game, was able to get in Luke Falk's face, hands in the air, makes him elevate the throw. Nathan Jerry, right here, pick six, touchdown. You never want that. All parts of the defense were successful on that play. Graham, hands in, playing right here. Linebacker, he, he has his eyes on Le'Veon Bell. As soon as they fake it to Bell, his eyes are going right to Bell because if Bell's not getting in the run game, he's getting in the pass game. Quick throw, linebacker, easy play, pick six. Everybody work. Linebacker, you make the play. D lineman, Graham, hands in the quarterback's face, and that's where he lived all day, right in the quarterback's pocket. He was there at every point that Falk turned around. Offensive line couldn't stop him today. That has to be tough for a quarterback when you've got hands in your face and guys chasing you the entire day. It's the fact that he got the ball out was impressive. Of course, it's, it wasn't impressive, the result. It is very tough for a veteran quarterback to have somebody in his face. Picture right. a rookie quarterback that didn't have practice. Yeah, you well, didn't have a full practice week. Well, Quarterback, uh, somebody's in your face, well, pressure in your face. You're just trying to get the ball out your hands. Let me tell you something, Jamal. You didn't have any practice with us, and you were sensational <laughs> on Jets late night. We thank you for coming in studio once again. Appreciate and the Jets it. are going to be looking to break uh, into the win column next week against the Cowboys. For Jamal Westerman and Otis Livingston, I'm Steve Overmeyer. We'll see you next week.